Right, this video here is on uh, how to determine a chord length. So a chord length equals the diameter of a circle times sine A over 2. That's the formula for determining a chord length. A chord length is when you take a line uh, across a circle. It's just a straight line across a circle between two points. Fixing a point, running a straight line across, and that gives you a chord length across a circle. You can run it back to get an angle in a, uh, on a circle. So what I've got here, theoretically, is a pipe flange. Uh, and I want to put five 10 millimetre holes in it. Five holes, 10 millimetre diameter, and I'm going to use this formula here to do it. So the first thing we all know that a circle has 360 degrees around the outside of it. So what I want to do is put the circle or the, uh, the points for the five holes on this median line in the centre. And it has what's known as a PCD, a pitch circle diameter of 245 millimetres. So for five holes, I need to divide the 360 uh, 360 degrees, divide that by 5. If you do that on the calculator, you find it comes out at 72 degrees. So if I pick a start point, I'm going to go 72 degrees to the first hole, 72, 72, 72, and back to, to the original start point. So if we put this into this formula, the diameter, chord length equals the diameter of 245 millimetres, and we're going to have sine A divided by 2. So what you need to do for a start is divide the 72 uh, by 2, and that equals 36 degrees. So it's sine 36 degrees. That's the actual equation that you're going to use. So the 72 would have gone up here where the A is, but you have to divide it by 2 before you uh, use it as a sine function. So I'm going to do that on the calculator. So I've got 245 millimetres times sine uh, 36. Push equals, and that gives me 144 millimetres. I'm going to take my compass, and I'm going to set it to 144 millimetres on the rule that I've got here. You can't see this, but that's what I'm doing. And I'm using this bottom point here, I'm going to scribe an arc here, that's 72 degrees. Next one is to this point here. Putting my compass on there. I'm on a piece of glass so it can slip, so I've got to be a bit careful. Next one at this point here. And the last one at this point here. And it comes back to the beginning. So, there's my uh, five points around the circle. I can centre punch those and go and drill my 10 millimetre hole on the drill press. And that's how you can determine points on a PCD using the chord length formula of diameter times sine A over 2. You divide the circle of 360 degrees by how many points you want to have in it. That gives you an answer. You divide that by 2 and put that answer in with the sine figure and times it by the diameter and you'll get a straight line length. So the straight line length, I use my rule across this particular circle at this point here was, as I said, 144 millimetres. We can use exactly the same formula, chord length, diameter times sine A over 2, to determine any angle on a circle. Let's say you're laying something, something out on a bench, on a piece of metal, and you want to work out an angle when you haven't got a large protractor. So I've got a protractor here, 180 degrees, it's incremented. You haven't got one in the workshop. All you've got to rely on today is a set of dividers. I've drawn my circle here. It's 321 millimeters in diameter. And let's say I want to put an angle on here of, just make it up, um, 130 degrees. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide that by 2. So into my formula, I just dropped the uh, protractor. Let's not worry about it. 
So into the formula, it's going to be chord length equals 321 millimetres diameter times 130 divided by 2 equals 65 degrees. So it's going to be sine 65 degrees. So into the calculator, just going to do that. 321 times sine 65 equals... That gives me an answer there of 290.92 millimeters. So obviously not going to be able to set your protractor or your sorry your compass to 290.92. You're probably going to round it to 291 millimeters. So if I set my compass to 291 on my stainless steel roll that I've got here, 291. onto the board here, it's giving me that point there, put that on there, and taking my line back to my centre, this portion here is going to be 130 degrees, pretty obvious, 180 would be at that point, 90 is at this point here roughly, there's 270. So clearly I've gone between, um, you know, the 130 and 180, so it's actually accurate. Let's say you wanted to go to an angle of uh, 290 degrees. Well, you can do exactly the same thing. So you're going to divide it by 2, and you have 145 degrees. That's going to be in your formula. So this time the equation would be CL for uh, chord length equals 321 millimetres times sine 145, so do that on the calculator, 321 times sine 145 equals, and it gives me 184 millimetres, so just setting my compass up to that, 184, now if I put that in there and swing my arc, I mean I could swing it both sides, so just be aware of that when you come to mark it in. Putting that on there, drawing my line in. So clearly this time the angle is going all the way around to this point here. And what did I say it was? It was 290 degrees in this portion here. So this was 270, so I've gone another 20 degrees past. That component there is about 20 degrees, or it is 20 degrees. Obviously it's not on this side because there's the 90. If I was 20 back this way, this portion here would only be 70 degrees. So just think about it when you step it around the circle, that you're actually putting it into the correct zone. But that's how you use a chord length with that formula there. Work out your diameter of your circle, work out the angles that you want, and divide it by two and put the number into the actual sign figure, times it by the diameter, gives you a chord length, which is, as I said, a straight line length across a circle from one point to another. So you can use it to draw points on a circle for, say, drilling holes on a flange, for a weld-on flange or a screw-on flange onto a pipe, or if you're marking something out on a bench and you don't have a protractor, which I conveniently or inconveniently dropped on the floor, you can just do it with a set of dividers to work out what you're trying to do. There you go, leave it there.